Steve Monvego and I welcome you to the Digitization Summit brought to you by the Real Estate Investor Magazine. To adapt and thrive in the digital age for you, for you out here today, you need to acquire more technology resources. You're going to get that today. You're going to, you're going to see companies, you're going to be people. Um, you need to upskill your staff. You need to have continuous training. You need to employ new skills and you need to collaborate. And that's what we're doing now. We've got a lot of competitors here in the room and they're going to be sharing what they're doing. So you're going to be working together over the next few days in terms of what they're doing. So what we're going to do at REI Mag is that we're going to introduce a PropTech Awards at the end of this year with the help of you guys, every single one of you in the industry. And we want to identify the best prop tech companies and now we're joined by Mrs. Stafford Mercy, who is the General Manager of Co-Working Spaces WeWork, in other words, here in South Africa. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, um, can you please just share with us what your presentation was about? I think what I was trying to posit is that the world's changing, and uh, that dispensational change, that tectonic change that we're seeing, uh, just unpacking that and seeing what are the influences. Mm -hmm. And we talk about the fourth industrial revolution all the time, and I just think that we really need to focus on a couple of core elements and what I was trying to do in my presentation this book was just speak about AI and artificial intelligence and how artificial intelligence is, is changing humanity, it's changing the expectations of you and I um, in, in ways and means that we're starting to figure out and that definitely has an impact on real estate, that it has an impact on where people live, work and play uh, on a massive scale globally. So the presentation was a wake up call say you know, we work as an instantiation that's a personification of a business that is built around the shift and we're going to see this happening more and more and it's 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 a reboot it's a metamorphosis in the in the real estate environment yeah now let's talk about technology um, in in property um are you really seeing the diversification of the property sector through technology is it something real yeah i think there's two aspects to it i think the one aspect is operationalizing a building uh, a, you know a next generation building management system that has internet of things tools um those those things are interesting um but we also see some technologies example that we works employing that allows us to offer services in a very different way. So we have a notion of the city becomes a campus and ultimately the globe becomes a campus. So your ability to come into WeWork here in Cape Town, take your, you know, get your WeWork, the little black WeWork card, uh, you log on to the Wi-Fi, and then you know what happens when you go to London? You don't have to talk to anyone again. You can walk into any WeWork and just tap and walk in and mm. then you connect. Yeah. And that fluidity, that ability to walk into disparate spaces independent of proximity and just being able to work, that is very deep technological enablement underneath that. That's the federation of your authentication, your identity, and the technology is starting to seep into the physical structures. And what happens is, if you are a millennial, if you are whoever you're a global businessman that's walking around trying to do business, if you're a startup trying to start up your company in London, the beauty of it is you can walk into a WeWork tap and you've got access to all the beautiful services, etc. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to think about connectivity. You don't have to even think about the costs associated with it or the provisioning of that service because we've got all these application sets that make these things possible. What about making or taking property as your source of finance or source of income. Right. Um, if you're a business and you want to grow, um, many say having property as your major asset mm -hmm. is, is very beneficial mm -hmm. to you. So which one is it? Which one are we No, I think it's very congruent. I mean, if you own a building, that's why a lot of landlords come to WeWork. Mm -hmm. And they want WeWork inside of them. Why? Because WeWork does a couple of things, right? So we only take, you know, five-star graded buildings, our white boxing of our buildings from an HVAC, uh, a physical security perspective, an evacuation perspective, uh, the greenery, the, the carbon footprint of the building. We have a very high benchmark. So let's talk. First impact is physical structure, making it more valuable because it's a better building. Mm -hmm. uh, the TI, you're kitting it out with beautiful furniture, you beautiful things inside of it. Then you've got these people coming inside of it, which are your top businesses, your top enterprises, your top startups, emerging businesses. So it becomes a node where everyone wants to be. Mm -hmm. And once that starts happening, the ecosystem around the building starts being impacted. So you find, example, with WeWork, um, large restaurant chains approach us all the time top brands because they want to be close to a WeWork because yeah. of the amount of people we put in the building. So the, the, the ecosystem of buildings and services in that proximity of that location just upgrades. And, and then we start introducing new forms of value-added services like 
in South Africa we'll be introducing electronic scooters, mm. uh, you know, battery powered scooters in yeah. partnership with a third party. We partnering with Uber, um, we're partnering with public transportation uh, services um, and adding all of those value adds inside of it. So I do think that if you own a building, you want to work inside of it. There's got to be a lot of time invested in all of this. Let's talk about your benchmarking um, quote. That quote is a very, it's an Accenture quote, which is the benchmark for innovation. Mm -hmm. It says whatever you're doing as a business today should represent 75 plus percent of your revenue in 36 months from now. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a shocker. When people hear that, they go, whoa. So that's the benchmark for innovation. And I think it's a great benchmark because we, we always talk about innovation, but Accenture finally come up with like, what is that benchmark? And I think it's a great generic way of determining from a metric perspective, are you an innovative business or not? Mm -hmm. And I think the way it works in unison with what we offer is that if you're gonna innovate at that rate, you can never do that organically. That's non-organic innovation. Mm -hmm. That's innovation that happens not with you hiring the best people and coming up with the best ideas. It's more combinatorial. It's when you're unlocking latent human potential outside your business that's augmented with all those AIs yeah. to do things on behalf for your businesses that was previously unimagined. And that's innovation. So innovation is building an ecosystem, not building a beautiful set of products and services. And the way to do that um, is one question. Who's gonna do that is the other question. And then the big question is where are they gonna do it? And I think WeWork plays itself into you know, that third one, saying where are they gonna work, live and play? Well, we're gonna provide you the facilities and the services associated with that to incur that innovation, where that innovation can actually execute. And we're seeing large enterprises doing that. So when they spawn these big projects, these big digital projects or these blockchain projects, they put them inside of a WeWork because it's unpredictable, right? You don't know if it's gonna be 20 people today or 200 people mm. next year. And if you're innovating at that rapid rate, um, the cost of that is predominantly where those people are gonna be located. What type of services are you going to provision yeah. for them? We want to answer those questions. So I think that quote and what we work delivers fits very, very closely. It ties concretely. That's it. This is Mr. Stafford Massey, who is the general manager of WeWork. Thank you. Speaking to some of our speakers and panelists at the digitization event or summit brought to you by the real estate sector. And now we're joined by John Murray, who is the Chief Technology Officer at Lead Home. Thank you very much sir, for speaking to us. Thank you for speaking to me. Right. Um, first question, I want you to please expand on um, what your, 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 your presentation was about mm -hmm. and maybe answer the question of where does one, um, or rather where does online estate agencies and technology the main message of my presentation was that uh, technology and real estate can work very powerfully together. But there is a misconception in the industry that you are either traditional or you're online. Mm -hmm. And I think that's uh, kind of missing the point and putting the, the cart before the horse. Mm -hmm. So the, the real question is where can technology solve real problems in the estate agency industry? Mm -hmm. And uh, that is uh, through things like automation, uh, adding AI, uh, all of those kind of things, um, letting customers self-service. But it's not about replacing estate agents. It's really about empowering estate agents and empowering uh, the consumer to really have control over their transaction. When we're looking at the real estate sector and, and the property sector at large, you'd see that um, the, the sector has kind of led in terms of um, catching up with technology and going digital. Mm -hmm. And maybe I want you to look at, at that and maybe um, what really should have been done. Technology hasn't really filtered into the estate agency industry, mostly because of the type of transactions that uh, estate agencies do. Um, buying or selling a property is a high value, low frequency type of transaction. Whereas if you look at other industries where Uber, Netflix, Airbnb, those kind of companies have really disrupted, they operate in an industry where the transactions are uh, low value and, and high frequency. Yeah. And that makes it uh, really much easier to disrupt those industries um, because people don't need to commit uh, to a company 
or a transaction for for the long term. It's not a big loss if it doesn't really work out. Whereas if you're selling your property, that is for most people their biggest financial asset. So they're not going to entrust it to some upstart with an idea. Um, and that, that means that the industry has really lagged behind in technology adoption, purely because it's harder. Um, there's, there's not so much appetite, uh, at, at least in previous de decades, from technology companies and venture capital to move into an industry that is so hard to disrupt. They'd mm -hmm. rather go for the, the easy uh, stuff first. We're seeing innovative uh, technology uh, coming through. Um, not a lot of traditional agencies are really adopting transformative technology. Mm. It's more uh, adding on technology onto their uh, existing okay. processes. Mm. Traditionally, we know that real estate is physical, yeah. right? Mm. And now there's, there's this idea of going online, going digital, and taking mm. it, you know, to, to the digital world. Mm. Um, and you're saying that um, real estate is physical and mm. certainly not digital yep. um, mm. as an asset. Mm. Can you please explain that? Well, it is a physical asset. There's physical bricks and mortar uh, that you're you're trying to sell. There are instances like Uber and Airbnb where uh, technology has moved into the physical space, mm -hmm. but once again, it's in the the low value transactions. For 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 real estate, you're you're making a, a long term commitment and. Each property, especially in South Africa, where we've got uh, a lot of freestanding houses and small complexes, each property is actually different. Mm. Um, it's not the same as the, the one next door, which means you can't just say, you know, I've got a, a two-bedroom house, uh, 200 square meters, and then there's, there's a standard price across the industry for, for that asset. Mm. So you've got the traditional ag uh, agencies, the big brand names we will know. Mm -hmm. And about a decade, a little bit more ago, uh, you, you started seeing online agencies uh, coming in where they basically try to eliminate estate agents from the equation, um, do it all uh, digitally, and anything that can't be done digitally, they just ask the client to do themselves. Um, and that's really asking uh, people to do things that they are not experts at doing at a very high risk because of the size of the asset that you're dealing with. So what's uh, started to come through in probably the, the last five years is the idea of the hybrid estate agency. And what that basically means is you take the best of both. Mm. You don't eliminate the estate agent from the equation, you still have local area agents, but you take away a, a lot of their work. Um, you automate their work, you provide them with uh, data that is automatically uh, presented to them in a digestible format. So hybrid estate agencies provide the tools for those two to come together. So it's, it's really a mix of digital and, and physical um, and not throwing out the baby with the bathwater. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that traditional estate agents do that really add a lot of value and hybrid estate agencies basically say let's keep those things but eliminate everything else and take those other things to shore. All right, then, Paul, thank you very much, Mr. Murray, for speaking to us. You're very welcome. I'm Mark Knowles, um, I'm the head of growth at Proper, so we're a short term rental tech company. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed the first day of, of the event, it was super insightful. I think the one key I'll take for me is building a community around. Tech in South Africa, I think understanding that we are not siloed in what we're trying to do by scaling our, our prop tech companies. My name is Karina and I'm with Red Eye. We are Real Estate Development Interactive and we are so proud to be speaking this week at the Prop Tech Summit 2020. Um, it's been a fantastic event. It was brilliantly organized. The speakers have such a fantastic level of understanding of what the current issues are, what the potential solutions are, and this is where change actually starts to happen in South Africa. Big business and small business will be the change makers, and rooms like these are the places where we synthesize ideas, collaborate, and put those solutions into place. Thank you very much to Neil and his team. It's been beautifully catered, beautifully serviced. I can't wait for tomorrow. If you're not here this time, I'm sorry for you, but please come to the next one. See you guys.